Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the LibTech Double Dip. This board features Mervin's C2X camber profile, which is a shortened reverse camber between the feet and a lengthened camber section under each foot. So what you're gonna get is independent camber zones. That's gonna give you the load, pop, snap, and drive of this board. But with that reverse and just how the camber sections don't go all the way out in the tips, that's gonna change how this board transitions from edge to edge as well as how it floats in powder. This board is available in 159 and 163. I rode this board at Arapaho Basin on a sunny bluebird day with warm temps, slush, chopped chunder, dirty, crusty snow, perfect hero snow on the groomers, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So the overall flex of this board is stiffer and it just feels pretty much consistent from tip to tail. So you do have three key flex points that are mildly softer, and I mean mildly, outside the inserts, dead center, outside the insert again. That's it. So basically it's outside the inserts, dead center. That's where your flex points are. Otherwise it's consistent flex tip to tip. The torsional flex is very minimal. So when you do twist the board, you don't really twist it. You just sort of mildly twist it for when you're steering with it. And when it comes to stability, this board is actually really stable for being a twin. It's crazy. Like when you do get a little chatter in the tips, it pretty much dissipates before it's underfoot. And unless you're ramming into really crusty, rutted out terrain, you're not getting bucked around with this board. You're gonna feel it a little bit, so slightly bend your knees, but for the most part, this board just wants to plow through everything in its path. I mean, it's designed for Washington conditions, so riding heavy, wet, chundery, choppy, slushy snow, this thing just plowed through everything in its path with ease. It takes more effort than you think to load up the camber sections on this board, so you gotta be a little bit calculated with it, put a little more effort into it. Yeah, this board is gonna snap, but it's not the most poppy thing out there. This is a board that it kind of gets the job done. You're not really gonna have to worry about it, but it's not overly mind blowing. This board takes more effort than you think to get it to butter. And remember when I was talking about those key flex points? Yeah, you wanna try to aim for those outside the inserts on the nose or the tail. So you wanna get your weight out of there, go a little bit faster, press harder than you think, pray to your deity of choice, and then get ready for it to hook and kill you and die. This board is a little hooky when you're starting to get sideways, you're really pressing into it. You can feel it fight you the whole time. What I really recommend is fresh deep snow, steeper slush, a lot of speed, and don't forget to eat your muscle cheese. Those, those are the key takeaways with this. So it's not the most aggressive carving board, but there is power from edge to edge. You notice that with very minimal ankle movements, you can really drive this board. And when you wanna be aggressive and load that rear camber, push your knee into the center to activate that reverse and drive it off the tail, it'll lock in and it'll hold. You're not gonna fully lay it over, but you can carve with it. It's really designed for like those snappy, subtle movements and just more like slashy turns. But then again, it's a powder twin, so that's what you can kind of expect with it. Can it carve when you're on edge? Yes, when you're on a groomer, you're not gonna have to worry about it. Like I said, it's not the most aggressive carving thing. Short, tight, quick setup turns and medium mellow carves are really where it stands out. Stuff where you're just doing more ankle flexion instead of driving your hip and your knee into the board and really weighting and unweighting it. Who's this board for? The pow chasing guy that wants a twin. So this board's gotten stiffer since the last time I rode it and it just gives it more power. It really shows this thing's more stable it just charges better. And yes, I know it's a powder twin. I didn't get to ride it on powder day. Unfortunately, I was holding out for one last powder day of the season. This is one of the last boards I actually got to ride. But the one thing to note is when you're riding really heavy slush, it's a lot like riding Washington conditions when it starts to warm up in the spring. And this board just cut through everything. It plowed through that chop and chunder with ease. I didn't worry about it. It launched off the rollers, the side heads. It did what I needed it to do. Yeah, it would have been nice to ride it in 14 inches of pow, but then again, who doesn't want to go ride 14 inches of pow? I didn't get to do that with this, unfortunately. Would I hesitate? No, I wouldn't. This thing will crush powder. I know it. I can just tell by the way it rides. It's a really high performing powder twin. It's a little bit more demanding than others out there. So just take that into consideration if you're considering this board. Comparable boards. The Spring Break Powder Twin. 
the Marhar Lumberjack X, the Yes 2020. Binding recommendations, the Bent Metal Core Pro, the Ride A9, the Jones Apollo. This has been my review of the LibTech Double Dip. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.